Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hayford. I'm a content creator, a cinematographer. And this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living on the continent. And then we have someone very special on the show today. She has been on the show. A lot of people loved her. And I, I thought, you know what? Let me just bring her back again. So without further ado, Megan, welcome on the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan. Um... I'm excited to be back on the show. The last time we mm. talked about my life living in Ghana, transitioning from Philadelphia to Portland, Oregon, to Los Angeles, to Cape Town, South Africa, to Ghana. And I've learned a lot through my experiences. Um, I love that I can be in Ghana hosting wellness and natural hair experiences mm -hmm. virtually and in person and along the way i get to enjoy the madness of ghana okay um, i'm not gonna lie i like ghana mm -hmm. but i don't know how long i'm gonna be in ghana <laughs> really no let's talk about it so you you've been in ghana for almost nine months now i could have had a baby oh. <laughs> i could have made a baby Look, right i'm just saying i've been here long enough to birth a baby and it was supposed to be a three-month trip mm -hmm. that turned into nine months mm -hmm. and yeah so <laughs> I feel I, I feel a sense of Ghana frustrations uh -huh. flying around <laughs> so how's it been you know I tell people it's been in the beginning Ghana mm -hmm. felt like a kick in the neck okay because I think when you move to a new place that you're mm -hmm. not really familiar with, there's mm -hmm. a lot of unlearning. You're being exposed to a system you don't really understand, and it doesn't really make sense. Things aren't working as efficient as you want them to be, so mm -hmm. you have a lot of frustrations that okay. come up every day, whether okay. it's dealing with people, trying to get things done, mm -hmm. and I feel like there was a lot of resistance around, oh, wow. like, being grounded mm -hmm. and also like finding my way and okay. the right people okay yeah. so, so all right mm -hmm. hold on it used to feel like a kick in the neck now mm -hmm. it has it definitely feels a little warmer i think once you meet the right people and you kind of shift through and you learn you can kind of rest mm -hmm. and Ghana makes you surrender in a way that mm. I'm not really used to. I want things to work now. I want wow. it to work yesterday. Are you, are you trying to say Ghana humbled you in a way? Absolutely. And it's still doing it. Um, wow. Yeah, definitely. So not everyone is living their purpose, right? Yeah. They don't have the courage. It's sometimes hard. They don't mm. know. Is it yeah. the right move? You were in the, in the United States of America, LA. Yeah. And it came upon you move to Africa yeah okay walk us through how that went how did you make the decision how was it like even before you got the the boss <laughs> to okay, say so let, let's maybe, do it maybe let's start a little back I think sure I think growing up mm -hmm. you're taught that you have to like climb the corporate ladder right you have to do this 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 and this and when you get to this place you're gonna be happy you're gonna mm -hmm. have all the things that you need mm -hmm. and that really wasn't my reality, you know. I've been getting paid to do hair since I was 13, but I okay. also worked in the aerospace industry all of my career. Wow. So the summer after high school, I had a very intense internship, and mm. it really shifted my perspective around work. Um, mm -hmm. I was very money focused, so and oh. I used to tell people if the price is right, I'll move tonight. Isn't that a good thing? In a way, yes, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize, like, for 10 years, I said I wanted to get comfortable with discomfort. Mm -hmm. And although it's led to a lot of growth, it also has come with a lot of sacrifices right. that you don't really consider. Right. So, for example, um, the end of my college career, mm -hmm. I ended up studying abroad in Copenhagen. Okay. So, I live in Denmark. I'm there for four months. This is the first time I'm outside of the U.S., and I'm like... <laughs> things work yeah this actually is in the best country this, wow. sound, this feels a little better i like europe mm -hmm. life you know and living in a place like uh copenhagen where they really take care of their people mm. from like a government perspective mm. um i don't know what it feels like to not have to pay for school and have a stipend wow. and like have health care covered wow. you know wow so i think if you living in one place is kind of like staying in your bedroom mm -hmm. your whole life mm -hmm. and once i made that leap it kind of opened my mind and i try to tell people 
once you know you know yeah <laughs> once yeah. you know it's very difficult to go back mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. living a life and being satisfied that's mm -hmm. why some people when they start traveling like or like for example some people when they start traveling they kind of get the travel bug so mm -hmm. then they're traveling a lot or yeah. for example you get one tattoo and then yeah. you're like <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like a chemical reaction. That yeah, so I'll, I'll then. tell you. So starting there, mm -hmm. um, when I came back mm -hmm. to the U.S. Mm -hmm. from Denmark, mm -hmm. I, it, I was like, wow, like I want to live abroad. Um, then I ended up getting a role in Portland, Oregon. So I relocated mm. from Philadelphia to Portland, Oregon. Wow. And, you know, Portland's a place where it rains like nine months out of the year. So really, it was a lot. I felt like every time <laughs> I felt like every time it rained, like a dark cloud wow. was on top of me, wow. you know, and I had given up so much. Like I moved wow. away from my family. It's my the first long? time I lived there for three years. Wow. Yeah, it was the first time being like living on my own if you come from a big family, even if you're in the house, there's other people around you. So mm -hmm. I'm living by myself, my office. I am the youngest person in the corporate office, so mm -hmm. I have my own office, and it's just me, and it was very wow. isolating, wow. and I felt like I had the money, mm -hmm. I had the house, the car, and I just felt no too happy. sad. Yeah, I just Aww. felt, and I think because if you don't know who you are, right, and you're busying your life with things, responsibilities, I always had all these leadership responsibilities. Um, going to Portland kind of forced me to pause and like deal with things mm -hmm. and like realize who I am. Mm -hmm. So after three years of moving to Portland, I just was like, this isn't it. And mm -hmm. I don't know what's next. And I started listening to like thinking grow rich um hmm. rich dad poor dad like so oh. yeah so i'm listening to all these books that i really shifted my perspective and i realized like one day i would like i would go home mm -hmm. and i would cry like lord i'm so grateful for my best friends that wow. like would talk to me during this wow. stage because people think when you move it's very glamorous and yeah you're living your best life but there's also challenges that come Ups with it downs, as well yeah, yeah. So, what brought the emotions? Um, maybe feeling isolated. I think for a long time it was very difficult for me to be present where I mm. was because okay. I felt like, oh, like people are living their lives without me. And okay. I wasn't fully living my life. I was still coming into myself. I think growing up um, in a place like Philly, like Philly is a really cool mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, sometimes the mindsets can be a little limited where okay. if you're not walking a specific path, you're a weirdo or all this stuff. Really? So I think I've always shifted myself for my, in my environment. And Copenhagen was the first time I was mm -hmm. doing me to the max. I was mm -hmm. like switching up mm -hmm. my fashion and just like really doing me without feeling okay. like repressed or wow. confined from my environment. Wow. And Portland allowed the same thing. Okay. So it got to one point where I wrote out everything I wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I want to see in my ideal role? Mm -hmm. What type of projects do I want to work on? Mm -hmm. Because there were parts that I loved about working in the aerospace industry, mm -hmm. but there were parts like I used to manage a scholarship program and I love that. I'm very okay. impact focused. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that really drives my okay. moves. Okay, wow. So you moved from the LA, um, Portland, you've been no, to Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Portland, Portland? Oregon, then Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, so okay. Portland, I wrote everything out and then I maybe within a year. Okay. I ended up getting this sort of role in Los Angeles. And it okay. wasn't by accident. It okay. was literally like what people don't understand is if you want to shift to a mm -hmm. new um, career or if you want to shift into a new industry, it's kind of like it doesn't always come yeah, easily yeah. and I'm the type of person if I like what someone's doing mm -hmm. I'll devote my time and energy right, right. for free because <laughs> I know what the experience wow. will yield wow. and who you'll become as a result wow. so my job in LA um, mm -hmm. came as a result of me helping this guy that had a really great idea around like teaching veterans and underserved communities mm -hmm. aerospace inspection skills okay so yeah and what's funny is I went to LA mm -hmm. um, in January of 2016 and okay. I remember like running like I'm running down Rodeo Drive and mm -hmm. I'm like 
oh guys it's not a matter of if i'm moving here mm -hmm. it's when i'll see wow. you in six months wow and i got there in eight months wow so let's talk about the transition from la to south africa okay yeah that moment is very um special i would say because you are about to change your life <sighs> yeah. right i mean you've been to european countries most would say oh it's almost the same like like the usa right developed everything works the system yeah. but you're going to a continent where it's known in the media that things doesn't work yeah. different people different culture yeah. and you said listen i'm going to put la behind me and i'm moving to the <laughs> continent of africa south africa to be precise that's your first country in africa yes mm -hmm. let's talk about that yeah so when i first moved to la mm -hmm. i started to meet a lot of people who had done work in South Africa, whether it was a documentary um, or just more of like dialogue and facilitation work. Okay. And that's what, mm -hmm. is what I, I've loved, mm -hmm. like before starting the, you know, wellness okay. work. Um, so it started to come up on my radar. And what's funny is I actually had a dream, right? Mm. Mind you, when I moved to LA, I have a full-time job. I get into USC two months after moving to LA. So okay. I applied to grad school and I was like, you know what, I'm taking this job in LA. If I get into this school, cool. If not, I'm gonna live here for a year mm -hmm. and then I'll go wherever the school mm -hmm. takes me. Mm -hmm. So I get into USC two months after being in LA mm -hmm. and afterwards, um, yeah, after I got into USC, I also, in Portland, I started making this product. So there was one point in LA where I was working full time in grad school full time and trying to build my product business. Okay, so you were working how many jobs? I was working one job, but it was like a full time job. Okay. And then I was in grad school okay. and grad school wasn't easy the first year. Yeah. Are you trying to say you quit because then this time in it's not it's not it's mm. not adding up. You finished grad school? No, no, no. Um so I went to South Africa for an internship first. Oh, after. Okay. Yeah, so but before I found out about okay. the internship, I remember being overwhelmed with like work, mm -hmm, school, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there was one thought I was like, ah, I really wish that I could study abroad because wow. I wish I could do it again, but it's not possible because okay. I have my work. But okay. in twenty seventeen I ended up getting laid off. Mm. And literally two weeks later, I found out about the internship to South Africa. And it was wow. right after I had a dream that I wow. was there and I loved it. Wow. Yeah. So once I went to Cape Town, hmm. um, this was 2018. Okay. I worked for a startup accelerator program. And at this point, I just started my business. So I'm like, okay, girl, if you want... Um, if you want to be serious about your business, you need to understand what investors are looking for. So it wasn't by accident that I went to South Africa. I didn't go wow. there and just twiddle my fingers. Mm -hmm. I went there working for a specific company that I thought would transition my perspective on the continent. Wow. And it did because wow. my role, I was doing like um, marketing for okay. a company called Startup Bootcamp in okay. Cape Town. So okay. what they do is they help founders all around the continent scale their businesses and wow. grow so during those during the two months in south africa i met business owners from everywhere wow and it was really cool to see the sort of companies that mm. they were building the sort of problems mm -hmm. they were solving mm -hmm. and to be honest it was really inspiring i learned number one i had a hobby mm. and i have a business because <laughs> <have businesses. laughs> um number two i learned that wow like mm -hmm. why do they keep lumping up africa because mm -hmm. i'm working on infographics and i have to show like what um companies have applied to the program and what part of africa so mm -hmm. before i probably know like four countries in africa by the end i'm like ah, i've wow. learned so many yeah so wow. That really piqued my interest, and okay. I realized, like, economically, there's so much growth. Africa, obviously, is underdeveloped for wow. reasons mm -hmm. we all know. It's okay. been extracted for a long time yeah. by the West. So I thought it was really exciting mm -hmm. to be here okay. and, and then, see the growth. And you are here, and you are contributing to it. You were in South Africa, and you were contributing to it. You worked in this sector, and you have the experience, right? Now, walk us through. Someone is watching right now. They want to make the move that you did make, right? Even business-wise, how to scale up businesses and stuff like that. Yeah. You are expecting that, I would say. Yeah. When it comes to that, what advice do you have for people who have that interest to kind of move back to Africa and even do business? Chip that in there, and then I'll move to my next question. Yeah, so I would say 
test the waters. Okay. Doing an internship for two months gave me enough time where mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like I'm meeting people. Mm -hmm. After, you know, about a month, you kind of start to understand what it's like to be in a place mm -hmm. when it's, you know, yeah. not so new. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say number two, invest in relationships. Like the okay. first time I went to Cape Town, I know I could have had a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. but for me, like as a person coming to a country, I like to kind of blend in. Okay. I don't want to be disruptive. Sometimes okay. Americans are, are really disruptive because they come yeah. to a place Everywhere. and they're like, yeah, yeah. like I'm going to do it like I'm in America. Yeah. And it's like, no, like yeah. ease on in, like yeah. pay attention, observe, mm -hmm. and yeah. then seamlessly okay. fit in. Okay. So I think by doing that, mm -hmm. I was able to build good relations okay. that helped me understand like what sort of business opportunities there were, what sort of connections I could make in South Africa okay. and abroad. Wow. So, wow. yeah. Wow. So um, you, you made a lot of friends, okay? In South Africa, I would say, business-wise, yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Tell us, living in South Africa, Cape Town, how was it like? Because in the news, we hear a lot of, you know, Listen. robbery at gunpoint and stuff like that. Walk us through the good and the bad living in South Africa. Okay, so I loved Cape Town. Okay. And obviously, Cape Town, living in Cape Town is not like living in Ghana. Okay. Only because Cape Town is very familiar mm. because it's more developed than okay. any... I mean, I haven't been everywhere, but okay. it's one of the most developed, developed. places mm -hmm. on the continent. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, it kind of feels like the Europe of Africa okay. because you have the world there, mm -hmm. and it's really beautiful. Mm. So, scenic-wise, like mm -hmm. you can walk down the street and be overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the beauty. Mm -hmm. um, what I loved about living in Cape Town is I always felt like I was in a constant state of gratitude because okay. I'm just like, wow, God, I can't believe I get to experience mm -hmm. this. And I will say that. The first, when I first came at, um, as an intern, the mm. first two weeks, I was just terrified because before you leave, <laughs> at, even through my school, they were like, you need to get 39 shots. Mm. You need to not do this. Don't do this. You might get robbed. You might do this. And when I went to Cape Town, I realized there were a lot of white people in Cape Town. Yeah. I was not prepared for that. I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I'm going home to the motherland about to see my people. And you got there, there's only way. Yeah, so that was a shock for me. <laughs> it was a shock for me mm. because in Cape Town, a lot of the real estate businesses mm -hmm. are controlled by the white people, even okay. though they're only 10% mm. of the population. Right. So for me, the first two weeks, I was really terrified, okay. but it got to one point where I was like, okay. You feeling these, it? No, I said if these white people are comfortable, girl, <laughs> girl, get comfortable. You home? This is your mother. Really? Yes. Yeah, so I had to shift my wow. perspective because if you live in fear, mm -hmm. it's not a great place to. Yeah. It's not a to great thrive. way to experience mm -hmm. a new place. Okay. Yes. So you were telling me sleeping 8 p.m. and stuff like that. What is that about? Okay, so <laughs> what I will say is, Cape Town is a very fun place, but okay. for me, it just Ghana is very enjoyment. I've gone out in Ghana. Okay over the last nine months mm. more than i've gone out in la in cape town together wow. i was in la wow. for five years wow so in cape town i really enjoyed doing things throughout the day you okay. could hike you could go to coffee shops okay and i was boxing like mm. it was just a very active place i'm the type of person when you know you know mm. and i know now yeah. i've lived in places that are conducive to lifestyle mm. and human flourishing okay okay la cape town mm -hmm. So that kind of helped me to, like, I wasn't drinking mm -hmm. when I was in Cape Town. So oh, wow. obviously I wasn't, like, partying. Sometimes right. I would go out. Mm -hmm. I think if you have that energy, you don't yeah. need to drink to have yeah. fun. Right. Um, but for me, it was definitely, I moved there during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. my first time in Cape Town, I went out a little bit. But my first time in Cape Town was an internship. Okay. The second time was 2019 when mm -hmm. I launched the Crown Workshop. Okay. So okay. I came with a mission. So okay. even if I wanted to be living my life, I didn't even have that much money, to be honest. <laughs> so my resources were limited mm -hmm. and I needed to make sure, okay, okay, will these workshops work here? How are mm -hmm. people receiving it? Okay. Because How did it do in South Africa, um, your Crown Workshop? Yeah, so the first time I did it, it was um, in an area called Kailisha. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's a township, one of the largest townships. And I did it in collaboration with the school and mm. the nonprofit. 
Okay. So I came to Cape Town. I did like a crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of extra. Mm -hmm. So I came to do one workshop, but once I did one, mm -hmm. I met people and mm -hmm. then it ended up turning into four workshops. Wow. So what's funny is people don't get it. Like there's moments the second time in Cape Town where I did not even have enough money to pay for things that I needed, like wow. food really? and all that stuff. But I said, ah. If you're really? gonna starve, do it next to Cayman <laughs> Island. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, you know. Is it expensive there in South it's Africa? It's not expensive, but I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I mean, it's all about managing your resources. And okay. for me, I've always been the type of person for what I want. I'm okay. willing to starve for okay. it. Like, so, yeah. yeah. What would you say you you wish you knew? Uh, before going to South Africa and then if people are watching and they want to go give them some three advices before they go there Maybe not three give them one later on they can hit you up for consultation and you can give them the, yeah, the remaining so if two. you're gonna go to um, If you want to move to South Africa, mm -hmm. whether it's Joburg or um, Cape Town mm -hmm. What you want to do is Find coffee shops, okay, like my strategy every time I move to a place I like to go to different coffee shops mm -hmm. and become a regular. Okay. And a few, become a regular at a few. So mm -hmm. that way you're starting to talk to the baristas, you're talking to people who live in Cape live in Cape Town or South right. Africa. Right. You can ask questions about their experiences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is a great way to get connected with people okay. with similar like lifestyles. Because wow. some people are at work, some wow. people are working at a coffee mm -hmm. shop. You've mm -hmm. already you already have your target audience, yeah. you wow. know what I mean? Wow. And Everything that you've, you've, you've been saying so far, it looks very calculated to me. You know what you're doing. Yeah, right? people think I'm like, sometimes <laughs> people have this idea like, oh, like mm -hmm. you're just, mm -hmm. I knew in LA, like I had an avocado based product business. It was doing well, to right. be honest. I had a lot of clients, right. um, natural hair clients. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like I want to create jobs on the continent mm. and I want a global brand right and I can't create that be wow. local wow. wow it's just simple and wow. I knew that I'm not gonna lie I was it wasn't always easy to mm. have the audacity to say I'm, I'm gonna show up in your country. I'm gonna do these workshops. I've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew that sometimes God puts something on your heart, mm. and you keep hearing this whisper. Mm. And it's sometimes you being mm. like, "I'm not ready." I did when I went to Cape Town. I was a little scared the second time. Oh, really? Yeah, just because I didn't know how it was gonna go. I'm mm -hmm. investing like so much of my wow. time. I'm sacrificing to know a new place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And obviously in LA I worked in the aerospace industry if mm -hmm. I wanted to find a job at mm -hmm. SpaceX all these places I'm mm -hmm. sure I could have worked hard okay. enough to do that wow. but I felt like okay God all right I remember going to church and being like mm -hmm. okay I'm just gonna stop relying on my own strength mm -hmm. and like think about me doing mm -hmm. it in collaboration mm -hmm. with God and I think wow. that it was really challenging the mm -hmm second time and mm -hmm. third time going okay. to Cape Town because I was a little terrified. I don't always have a plan B, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But you, you, you made it out alive? <laughs> I think I oh. did more than make it out alive. And I think that yeah. when you are maybe kind mm. and open to new experiences okay. and open to meeting people, that is a good recipe for great things to happen in your life. Like. I think I've met so many interesting people mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay, so from South Africa, how long were you there by the way? Okay, so the first time it was two months, the second time two, two months, mm -hmm. the third time was a year and three months. Okay, so let's say two years, okay? You, you, you know everything, must up and down and everything, right? People want to go there. Later on, we talk about some advices and yeah. things you have to do before going there. But you decided to move to Ghana, right? Yeah. And you've been in Ghana for almost nine months now yeah okay you've seen a lot the ups uh, the downs yes definitely okay let's talk about Ghana yeah all right let's talk about one of the reasons I came to Ghana was right. because I was like okay I can't really be in South Africa being like yeah yeah I live mm -hmm. in Africa without mm -hmm. seeing different places of Africa right so I always knew that I wanted my workshops and mm -hmm. experiences to go around the continent. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, you need to experience something new. I came to visit for my birthday mm. and I told myself like, 
I prepared myself mentally that I would be open to what God had for me, okay, right? Okay. And after moving to Ghana, I ended up getting um, working with a meeting someone that works through. She built a nonprofit in the U.S. And because I went to USC, people don't realize the importance of tapping into your school network. There mm -hmm. was one. There was one moment in South Africa mm. where I reached out to USC and I said, "Hey." I, there's going to be a point in my career where you guys reach out to me mm -hmm. and you want me to donate to the school. Mm -hmm. But this, these are the moments I'm going to think about. Mm -hmm. How are you helping me with my career okay. uh, trajectory? And mm -hmm. I was just really honest, like, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. How can you connect me? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm doing. If you want to support me, great. Because I feel like, you know, you get to a point, I'm sure all the successful people in life, they have their schools calling them, being like, hey, can you donate to our school? But you want to be associated with the school that's actually going to be invested in you. Right. And I'm grateful I had USC to do okay. that. Okay. That led to Ghana. Mm -hmm. I've been in Ghana for nine months. Mm -hmm. It's been up and down. Okay. And I would say that... I came here because I wanted to do workshops in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it would look like. Mm. Um, and now, did you ask me, like, what did you ask me? I mean, Ghana, everything. Okay, so the Ghana. The ups, the downs, Ghana, the Ghana, workshops. Ghana. Accra. Okay, so first you have to um, separate Ghana from Accra. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ghana, are you, like, for example... Accra is very busy, it's crazy, it's expensive. People think, oh, you live in Africa. <laughs> Homie, my, my, my bills are a little more than Philadelphia mm. right now. Wow. Yeah, if wow. you, like, I could never commit to Ghana, so I always did short-term housing. Mm. And if you don't do a year up front in Ghana, mm -hmm. you're losing because you're going to spend so much more per month. But wow. because I didn't know how long I would be here, the idea of committing okay. to a year was impossible. Mm. Mm -hmm. So... I'll say the things I love about Ghana, um, all right, let me tell you one thing. People always say, oh, Ghana is really safe. Physically, is it safe for me? <laughs> Emotionally, no. Um, the food is very, very excellent. I think mm -hmm. my taste buds have like gone on an excursion I can't mm. come back from. Mm. Because even like a few months ago, there was a moment where I was like, I'm out, like I'm, I'm booking my flight, I'm yeah. not coming back. Really? Yeah. What happened? And I look like, and then as soon as I made this decision, like I'm in the Uber. And you remember like, Banco and Okro? Uh, yeah, I was, thinking, I, was thinking about, I was like, ah, what am I going to do if I can't have tiger nut milk? Like, things started feeling like, so I'm thinking of Banco, um, and Okra, Stu. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of the, the way the tilapia, yeah. and the, the grilledness yeah. of it with the, with the onions. Oh my God. And the pepper. You're obsessed with the what Ghanaian I, food. I'm obsessed with the pepper sauce. Wow. Yeah, so, so okay, so mm -hmm. I love the food. Um, I love that creatively, Ghana is so many people doing incredible things here. Right. It's really cool to be in that energy. Um, at the same time, I didn't know the rules here. Mm. Even going out, like, I didn't know the rules. Like, I come from a place that's very expressive. You can do you. And in Ghana, there are social cues and unwritten norms that. Mm -hmm. I didn't always follow because like I'm like I, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here I'm not about to change myself for you mm -hmm. like when you go out everybody I mean they're gonna say they're gonna play the same mm -hmm. 10 songs mm -hmm. any everywhere you go mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. but when you go out there's like certain dances and mind you I'm not really a dance I'm not really a yeah. dancer like that but then I'm like damn I need to learn these I need to learn the dances because mm -hmm. every time it comes on mm -hmm. everybody's doing the same thing and you kind of feel like damn I wish I knew this yeah, yeah. but at the same time I don't have a good memory. Okay. So when the song comes on, <laughs> I look like, I, I, I can't remember what to do. So, and on top of it, I think Ghana is very, like, reserved mm -hmm. in a way that mm. is not L.A. Like, okay. people are going to dance, they're going to be expressive, whereas here it's a little more not like that. So, mm -hmm. and I think Ghana is very judgy in a way that is a really? little uncomfortable. Yeah. So, but, let's talk about it. Yeah, I think people make, there's all these ways that you're supposed to operate mm. and it's like I guess because people say Ghana across small people talk a lot whatever but I think that Ghana is very judgy in a way that like if you want to be the full version of yourself sometimes people and I've been that way there's been moments in my life where I would meet people and they were like so much of themselves that it made 
me uncomfortable because I wasn't quite comfortable with myself and oh. bold enough to be free, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes here, I don't know, I just, I just feel yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, wow. So, um, <clears throat> no, very interesting. No, I talking about what else I like about Ghana. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's talk about the negative part, okay? Accra can be very frustrating. Very. So frustrating okay. that if you think about the frustrations, you might get too sad. I Let's think, talk a little bit about the frustrations. Yeah, I think what people don't understand, I've had my happiest, I have had very happy moments in Ghana, mm -hmm. but I've had some of the saddest moments in Ghana wow. where I can't even leave my bed. I, I'm feeling so depressed. Really? Here. Let's yeah, talk about definitely. it. Do you mind? Yeah, definitely. Let's I feel talk. like number one um coming as an american okay. sometimes people look at you as a dollar sign mm. and if you're in a stage in your life where you're still kind of building but you're trying to like contribute like a lot of the things i'm doing for impact it's a lot of time and energy i'm not getting paid for it right wow. um so like i'm pouring so much of mm -hmm. myself so to mm -hmm. feel that people are constantly trying to extract when I'm trying to give can leave wow. you in a place that feels a little, um, mm -hmm. you feel defeated. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know, like, I think in Ghana, I have to be a little, like, bitchier than I think <laughs> I am. Because, really? Yeah, because if you're too nice, people will be like, oh, well, like, oh, like, can you pay for my dinner? My, <laughs> like, they'll give you this full story. So now I'm at a point where it's like, not today. <laughs> but before I was just very open, very friendly. And I think that, it was like felt like everything was sucking my wow. energy and that was really challenging to deal with alone um especially having disappointments mm. here um in ghana there's been lots of huge life changes that have impacted me um, mm. and i just i didn't leave because i felt like no mm. i'm gonna do this and mm -hmm. i think ghana at the same time is a very strengthening place but mm. It's very, things don't work. Sometimes you feel like you're in the archaic system. Yeah. And just, why mm. should I have to be here That's all true. day for a car just mm. to make a phone call or yeah. just to get Wi-Fi? Wow. It's also, Ghana's very much like who you know. And, mm -hmm. I, and it's very classist. So yeah. sometimes, it was a little unfortunate. Like when you meet someone, I have friends from all walks of life. CEO, it doesn't matter. You live in Philly, mm -hmm. you interact with everyone. Mm -hmm. It's a melting pot. Right. Here, people distance themselves if they feel like you're at a level that they're not. And mm. they, I don't think they understand that, like, through relationships, that's how you shift. Because mm -hmm. when but you... But I think you're good when it comes to that. Because you are on the top of the pyramid when it comes to that. No, it, <laughs> no but, I, like, imagine... It's, no, what I'm saying is, like, imagine if I meet someone right. and they are maybe working at breakfast to breakfast or something, right. like... Just because you have a certain role, it doesn't mean that we can't really interact, oh, okay. you know? Okay. And I okay. think some I see. people I see. would feel like, oh, like, I can't be friends with her. And to be, or not friends, but I can't interact. Okay. And to be quite okay. honest, okay. I understand. if I felt that way, I don't think I would be where I am. It's mm -hmm. through the experiences of being with people that had different life experiences, more money than me, like just a whole different lifestyle mm -hmm. that led me to see more for okay. myself. So I feel like... Ghana is an interesting place. What in what way. has Accra taught you? Um, Accra, what lesson? Yeah. Accra has taught me that you mm -hmm. need to be self sufficient, mm -hmm. and you can't. You need to be self sufficient, and you cannot rely on people to do what they say they're wow. going to do. Wow. So yeah. from and what? Well, ahead. let me continue. And Accra has taught me that what you give is what you get okay. you know and it taught me to not be so trusting because you never know what ulterior motives Accra has always taught has also taught me to be a little more intentional about my energy and making sure like i am being um maybe setting intentions to be like god protect me from everything that mm -hmm. could be harmful to me mm -hmm. because there's so much energy here i think based on the history of ghana it's a very like heavy place and i think any place that has as many slaves as ghana sent out around the world is going to have some sort of mm -hmm. uneasiness that's okay. kind of difficult to rectify wow. sometimes so with all this experience that you have are you will you give this knowledge to people who will need it no absolutely because at the same time i kind of tell people ghana feels like quicksand because now that i i know what to do i know mm -hmm. that i need to leave a craft for the okay. weekends I love Ghana and I still want to have a lifelong relationship okay. with Ghana, okay. even though 
you need to take a break from God. Mm. I've been in this thing nine months straight. I mm. feel like I'm in a marathon. Wow. <laughs> you know? Wow. So mm -hmm. I will definitely help people who mm -hmm. are considering moving because I think there's specific ways for you to have success moving to any city, mm -hmm. let alone coming to Africa. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of things I had to unlearn and there's lots of things like you can't come to a place and be frustrated by what works for them because it doesn't work for you and mm. it's not what you're used to. Right. And that is a problem many people have coming wow. here. So if people watching right now have questions, they they want to know this, they want to know what not to do, how should they go about it if they want to reach out to you? Yeah, so if you go to my Instagram, which is at Motivate Vibe Grow, mm -hmm. um, I have a link tree. So okay. when you click on the link tree, I'll have consultations around relocation because okay. I think that when you're considering to move to a new place, mm -hmm. it's not just about relocating. It's about shifting your mindset. Okay. It's about um, making sure you're consuming information that's mm -hmm. going to be conducive. Because mm -hmm. if you tell people you're moving to Africa or whatever, people always have things to say. Right. And also professionally and from a career development, personal development perspective, okay. it needs to wow. make sense. And I strategically mm -hmm. was maneuvering my way and making the relationships mm -hmm. and connecting dots to yeah. make coming here okay. possible. Wow. Especially it, living here. And you, you were even telling me about the things that you do, even living here, places that you visit to, uh, to work and then how to even get cheap breakfast and lunch. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ways to money. So you give them everything. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'll tell you one thing. So <laughs> I think you have to learn um, what works for you. So sometimes I work Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, sometimes I work at this place called La Villa Hotel in mm -hmm. a crowd, mind you. It's in Osu. Mm -hmm. When you go there, you don't really feel like in, you're in Ghana because you walk through all these this yeah. greenery, then it's like a right. boutique hotel. Right. It's a pool in the middle, and then mm -hmm. there's a restaurant. They have a buffet. I have a friend, we constantly get in arguments because she's like, no, like their buffet is expensive. It's like 100, it's like 90 cities, 100 right. cities. And I'm like, okay, if you go to Jamestown Coffee and you order eggs, they're going to charge you. You order mushroom, mm -hmm. they're going to charge you. Mm -hmm. They order coffee, they're going to charge you. Mm -hmm. You order pineapple juice, they're going to charge yeah. you. It's going to come up to like way more yeah. than 100. Mm -hmm. Whereas I go to La Villa Hotel, it's a buffet. Mm -hmm. I get everything I want. Wow. I'm getting unlimited juice. I got people bringing me coffee. Okay. And breakfast is over <laughs> 11 o'clock at 10 58 uh -huh. i'm gonna make me a plate of jello fries <laughs> for lunch so i got it the whole day <laughs> 100 cities you have to understand value that's what wow. people don't get don't wow. think about the price think about the value wow wow so if you are watching right now trust me the people are living in accra and no matter how expensive it is they seem to get you know easy way out right like you did and i'll probably i don't know it but i might probably go to jamestown cafe eat everything that you might have eaten in the buffet and spent probably 300 cities exactly. but you would just probably spend 90 and, and being a foreigner sometimes you think okay i'm bringing some dollars so it doesn't matter it doesn't it, matter no it adds up trust me yeah. i've been living like i was living my life mm -hmm. every meal was just kind of expensive mm -hmm. the first six months but for example yesterday you saw me get my hair braided. yeah yeah did i go to a fancy place no no well I, when i was looking for i'm like where is she i was expecting to see somewhere i'm like Okay, interesting. No. So why did you go there? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I used to live across the street from there, and this girl is amazing. Mind you, it takes me a long time to, okay. like, trust someone to do my wow. hair. It's not really expensive. Like, I am not, like, I'm still figuring things out, mm. and I can't be spending unnecessarily no, in the okay. ways that I have. Okay. I got my hair done, and I said, ma'am, please find me some red red. <laughs> and I knew when she found me some red red, I was only going to pay less than 10 cities. Wow, wow. So some days I'm living my Jamestown, mm -hmm. you know, I'm living mm -hmm. the high life. Mm -hmm. And then some days, I know. <laughs> One thing that I love that I learned from a friend when I came mm -hmm. here is he was like, look, there's different ways to experience mm -hmm. a crowd. You can experience it as a tourist and mm -hmm. go to all these expensive places, or you can find your Wache place. You can find where to get red red, where to get contumery, where to get wow. beans. Wow. So I feel like... So you're advising them to leave like the locals when they I, come here? I think you need to have a balance. I okay. think that you can't... You need to have a balance and also make sure the food you're getting is mm -hmm. safe. Like okay, okay, what people don't know is getting food from the street is not always the best thing like to that. do. But like you could that. also like for example, where I lived recently, mm -hmm. we spent a little over like a hundred and something dollars a month and mm -hmm. we had someone that come and cooked and cleaned. So we just paid for the groceries. So okay. that helped me save. So throughout every um 
I feel like I've lived many lives in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I've learned different lessons that mm -hmm. I'm grateful for. Okay. Well, um, let me talk about this. Pe people are convinced they, they are in the U.S. They would be like, hmm, I would rather choose to live in Accra or Africa than to live in a place like, um, you know, anywhere in the U.S. that is not safe. I would probably get killed in traffic. Okay. I don't want this to be my life. I'm tired of the racism. I want to come to Ghana. They are convinced. They are booking their flight ticket. They are checking flight tickets as I'm speaking to you. Yeah. But sometimes people say they walk into the alliance then without knowing what to do. They fall in the hands of the bad people and everything, right? Yeah, that was me. Exactly. And now you've learned from it, yeah. okay? And you are doing consultation, yeah. okay? Let's help them because, trust me, people are getting duped I know. here. Yeah. The aspirants. And even if they want to buy lands or stuff like that, they are duping them. But you've been on that land. You've experienced everything. You know the good places to go, the, the not so good places to go. Yeah. Give that to them, but it's, it comes with a fee, right? And you have a cash app. So tell everything to them right now. If they want to contact you, what they have to do, how much they have to pay, and then let's move to the next step. Yeah, so I want to help people who mm -hmm. are consider re relocating to right. either South Africa or Ghana. Mm -hmm. And even if you're at a point where it's something that you won't do immediately, I think investing in a consultation where you can think about how can I make this work, whether mm -hmm. I'm in grad school, whether mm -hmm. I'm in college, mm -hmm. or I'm shifting to a new career. How can I make relocating work? What do I need to do prior? What do I do when I'm testing the waters during my first trip? What do I want to do on the second trip? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do the first three months I get to a place to okay. make sure it's going to be successful? Okay. So if you want a consultation, you can um, go into my bio okay. where I have a link tree. And my cash app is MBG Naturals, mm -hmm. N A T U R A L S. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the best way. And okay. honestly, I wish I had this. I feel like I've been like with an axe, like paving mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you really wish you had someone that kind of held your hand. Okay. I tell people, even when I'm doing like natural hair mm -hmm. coaching mm -hmm. sessions online, I want to hold your hand during the transition period. And I think you need the same thing when okay. you're coming to Ghana. Okay. So you offer that consultation as well Absolutely. for the hair growth as well. Yeah. Okay. So I have natural hair consultations mm -hmm. and then consultations for when you want to relocate and you want advice on how to make it okay. happen successfully. Okay. I've been relocating for over 10 years. <laughs> I think I have it. It's kind of beautiful to get to a space where right. I feel like I can go to any country in the yeah. world and I'll be okay. Okay. So with that experience, you'll be giving everything to them. So if you are watching, these things would be on the screen, okay? Also in the description, you can just click it and then contact her. And how much will you charge for the consultation moving to Ghana? I'm going to do 50 an hour. 50? And honestly, an it hour, okay. 10. Look at it's cheap, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you might probably lose that coming here if you don't know the right person to deal with. No, absolutely. So it's free, it's free advice to me fifty dollars is free people have always like because i've been living my life and mm -hmm. relocating whenever people are thinking about it they're sending me messages on instagram they're sending me messages yeah. on facebook and now i'm just formalizing the process because okay. time mm -hmm. i would like to help as many people as possible because okay. i needed it and i think that once you get to experience living in africa or like just living outside of mm -hmm. the u.s it really shifts your perspective and everyone deserves to experience okay. that and they can't be afraid and mm -hmm. by investing in this sort of knowledge okay it helps you demystify the fear around okay. it because people will be like don't do it yeah yeah what, what would you say was the worst advice someone gave you when you told them you're coming to africa the worst advice i think the worst advice um honestly is like people who come from a perspective of ignorance mm -hmm. and they don't understand that like there's Ghanaians living better lives than people in the U.S. Mm. And there's many Africans that live a life that we've never experienced. Wow. If you have money in Ghana or South Africa, you live a good life. Yeah, you and live like kings exactly, and queens. No, you do. Right. And I think that when you're ignorant and you think that I'm walking in, like literally the first time I came, you would have thought I was about to walk into a jungle because wow. there was not adequate information mm -hmm. about like, what it was like living here mm -hmm. and the like advancements like the technology like mm -hmm. they make it seem like you 
yes ghana is underdeveloped like but it's actually one of the most incredible places to be because mm -hmm. you have so much opportunity to build mm -hmm. one thing i love about being in ghana i've watched people build their dreams mm -hmm. where i am right now is a co-working space mm -hmm. bureau and i've been working here since February and it's actually helped me stay in Ghana because it's 24 hours number one it's a beautiful space it has greenery I'm meeting people who are coming from around the world and at the same time I'm watching it being built there's so many businesses that when I first started coming it looked one way and now it looks like they gradual refinement right. all the time mm -hmm. and that's kind of inspiring to think that you can come to a place buy yourself some land, build your business, and like see it grow. So wow. I love what Ghana has exposed me to. Wow, I like that. Let's talk about hair, okay? okay. The last time you came on the show, you said... I um, got my hair. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how to act with my new braids. And I with the braids, she's like a whole different person. I, I see, it's beautiful, by the way. I like it. And then you, you talked about how um, Ghanaian females are being stripped off from their identity. Yeah. when they go to school and they cut their hair short right yeah we we spoke about it but there in the comment sections people were like no it's not because of colonial colonization whatever that is right it's not yeah. because of it we as the Ghanaians our mothers used to cut their hair before the white man even arrived okay right so it's not because of slavery and all those things that you're talking about okay and they they, they are trying to tell you you don't know what you're talking about are you still standing by what you're saying Oh. Well, I don't think an institution that mm -hmm. is not African mm -hmm. can come into an African country and mm -hmm. say, hey, mm -hmm. your hair is disrupted. Mm -hmm. You need to cut it. I think everyone should have a choice. And mm -hmm. the fact that it's been mandated is the problem. I think, like I tell people, if you want to, if you want to do a perm, if you want to do a fro, if you want to do a wig, if you want to do whatever, just have options. Don't feel like you have to do this. Like You have to wear a wig because you won't look beautiful in the fro. You have to wear a fro because you can't express yourself with straight hair sometimes. Mm. So the issue is not whether or not, obviously, there's so many people, even in South Africa, people cut their hair because maybe it was easier. But at the same time, mm. why why are black children being told that they have to cut their hair, mm. but the same white children or mixed children are not being told that their hair is disruptive? Don't miss the point. Okay. The point is you're not giving people the choice mm. and opportunity to express themselves mm -hmm. through hair that mm -hmm. has been linked to African identity mm -hmm. all throughout the years. Okay. And if you want to join one of my workshops, I actually talk about the history of African grooming practices mm -hmm. and the significance of your hair. Okay, how do they join? Yes, yeah, so I have upcoming experiences in September. September, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. So I'm still sticking by what I said because okay. at the end of the day, Africans can't go to, to the UK and tell people they need to cut their hair. Call mm -hmm. me when that happens. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I mean, people are saying, listen, you are an African American. I, and even though I consider all black people to be Africans, there were people hating in the comment, and they are like, how, how dare you come and lecture us about what to do and what not to do. But these are the same people who are saying that they need change. They want Ghana to be like the USA. The thing is, I don't think Ghana needs to be like the US. Okay. I think Ghana can be like Ghana. Switzerland mm -hmm. is like Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Holland is like Holland. Mm -hmm. Denmark is like Denmark. Mm -hmm. You have to find what's efficient, what's best for your people. Okay. And what like contributes to people living good lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to actually um, lecture people, but mm -hmm. I do have opinions. And if mm -hmm. it makes people uncomfortable, I act on my opinions. Things that bother me, I create solutions. Things that I think are a problem, I create programming around it. So I'm not here complaining. I'm here learning, okay. observing, and pouring, and giving back in a way that I think is necessary. So I think people in the comments, create a social impact project and mm -hmm. call me. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Like, let's do something productive. I think it's very easy to condemn what people are doing. Like, oh, you should be doing this. Oh, you should be doing this. But what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Typing? Mm -hmm. They are keyboard warriors, okay? Don't don't <laughs> talk to my keyboard warriors no, like that. <laughs> no, to, to be quite honest, I open feed like I'm open to like feedback. I'm mm -hmm. open to. There's no right way. 
but okay. I know that I've lived my life and I've learned that hey when things make me frustrated like one of the reasons mm -hmm. I started the crown workshop mm -hmm. is because I knew a lot of women didn't feel comfortable and confident in themselves because mm -hmm. of the woman that sat in my chair wow. and when you hear when you see women shrink when they see their natural hair I used to shrink when I would take off my like mm. my long bundles so I understood it in a way that was personal even when I'm in South Africa I think when you walk down the street in South Africa and you see a black little girl shrink in the presence of like a white little girl or like a black woman shrink in the presence of a white woman and like this is the norm mm -hmm. you can't be quiet and mm -hmm. sometimes when you talk and I think for a long time you see I, did, I barely post on YouTube mm -hmm. I don't post my opinion often mm -hmm even though I'm very vocal and active because okay. I'm doing the work. Just okay. do the work and okay. tell me tell me how it's going. Yeah. Now, speaking about YouTube, you have a YouTube channel, okay? Yes. I, I want know. the people watching <laughs> to come subscribe to you, okay? Okay. Now, I need you to tell them how consistent you are going to be when they subscribe. Okay. 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 So, I am going to post a video at least once a week and once a week twice a week twice a week he posts three times a week yes that's a lot but <laughs> what i will tell you is i've recorded mm -hmm. a lot of content mm -hmm. i like videography in general okay so i've recorded a lot of content from living in los angeles being with my clients right. before and after pictures mm -hmm. living my life in la to mm -hmm. cape town to ghana but sometimes i didn't always feel comfortable like putting it all out there okay. because number one it's very challenging to collect content and put it together when you want to be present. Okay. So okay. it's like, how am okay. I going to be telling y'all the story when okay. I'm living it? Yeah. You know? And yeah. also at the same time, I think every stage of your life allows you to get more comfortable mm -hmm. with yourself. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, like in some ways I've been um, bold and I've yeah. had audacity to create what I want to see okay. in the world. But at the same time, I've kind of been yeah, like Yeah, don't this. find excuses. Just show them, okay? No, but I'm no, I'm just letting people know that okay. like sometimes not everyone is mm -hmm. that person. But okay. now I'm okay. doing it because I think it would be helpful for okay. people. So what's I the name of the channel? It's called Motivate Vibe Grow. Okay. So Guys, do a link. I know. I'm please if you are watching this, go subscribe. The link will be in the description. Okay. And then comment down in on one of her video. <laughs> We are waiting for two videos this week. Please no, no, and I like the pressure because mm -hmm. I really do think that I live in I live a very interesting life, and I'm very like right. myself. So if I'm feeling in my feelings, we won't talk about <laughs> it. So unless y'all want to go everywhere, <laughs> don't subscribe. <laughs> now let's talk about hospitality, okay? Yeah. You've been here in Ghana, and you were saying <laughs> Ghana is hospitable, but someone is saying that. We Ghanaians, when we come to the USA, we, are, we don't feel that kind of hospitality. So when you guys come here, you talk about hospitality, we don't get you. Have you made us hospitable? Is it the right English? Yeah. In the US, and now you are expecting us to do the same. What, what do you have to say about that? What I will say is there's a difference between like being hospitable, mm -hmm. making people feel welcome, mm -hmm versus extracting when you go to the u.s they don't say oh this person's from ghana let me take everything yeah. let me tell them a story yeah. about every you yeah. know and i think at the same time when you go to the u.s mm -hmm. it depends on where you are if mm -hmm. you're in the south that is a culture of like hospitable people but mm -hmm. if you're in new york it's a little cold just because it's a big city so you have to think about like the culture of where you're going to the u.s okay. whereas I learned to think about the culture of Ghana, the struggles people face mm -hmm. that actually may lead them to being extracted just out of survival. And now I kind of have a little compassion about it. Okay. Like, for example, there are moments in South Africa where I was like, you know what, baby, if you got to take somebody's phone to feed your family, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so I didn't feel any sort of like, I kind of knew that like, I pray that that doesn't happen to me, mm -hmm. but I understand mm -hmm. what people are going through and okay. people are struggling. They don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. The city is 10 mm -hmm. to $1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was here when it was 5.5 and wow. things, prices aren't shifting. Mm -hmm. So I can understand when you're like struggling mm -hmm. and what can lead you to act okay. that way. Whereas in the U.S., some people 
the U.S. is very like individualistic. People are in their own. I lived in Philadelphia. When I would speak to the bus driver, he'll be like, "Where are you from?" Yeah. <laughs> so you have to understand the culture of where you're going. Okay. And okay. it took me a long time to understand. I wish I had like a mm -hmm. Ghana cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do you think how welcoming Ghanaians are has reduced over the time drastically? I don't know because I came here for the first time in April of 2021 and I think it depends on where you are in the sort of like mm -hmm. humbleness you have like mm -hmm. if you come being like even in South Africa if you're not humble and you're like I'm American I know this blah, 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 then people aren't going to be open to you because you're not going to be a person that people want to relate to but if you are kind and maybe like I always try to compliment people like in South Africa I'll be like I'll walk down the street and I'll be like Zikle and Noele Zaiko and that mm. means like uh, your hair is beautiful. Wow. You know, That's so nice. that was like my, my my icebreaker. Okay. So here I try to like just make people feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I make sure I'm like asking people's names and I'm getting to know them. So I think you get what you get. Okay. Are you learning some chi? Um, Edison. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know that much, honestly. Yeah. Look, look. Um, um, I didn't know that much, honestly. I wish I did. And what's funny is, even myself, because mm -hmm. I was never trying to commit to Ghana, mm -hmm. I didn't commit to the things that okay. would have made Ghana a little smoother for okay. me. So, I know personally when I look back, I wish I took a little more time to learn. learning okay. the language. But okay. I was really in my feelings and I was just trying to leave. Okay. But then the more I got like Ghana feels like quicksand, guys. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm too deep and I yeah. can't go. Yeah. And I do know that I can't let negative experiences influence my perspective of a whole okay. country. Talking about negative experiences, it's been months since I spoke to you in the first video. Yeah. Will you say, you said you are comfortable living here. Will you say you are still comfortable living in Ghana as it stands now? I think it all depends. It depends on the day mm -hmm. because you have some days where you're like, ah, Ghana feels good. Like people, the food, like sometimes guys, it's going to be very difficult for me to leave now that I've taste teased it <laughs> and I've been going to the living room. I think <laughs> my life is changing and I've tasted like green soup fufu mm -hmm, now mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like sometimes it just revives my spirit. <laughs> so only the food is going to bring you back to Ghana? No, not only the food. I, I wouldn't say I think I'm ready to go home mm -hmm. and kind of reset. So mm -hmm. Maybe when I go home, I'll do like videos of mm -hmm. like me in LA, New York, okay. all these places. Okay. But I'm ready to go home and reset because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I miss my family. Okay. And as much as I can love a new place, I don't want to be the person that's mm -hmm. away for eight months, mm -hmm. a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I'm coming back because I miss my family okay. and I miss my friends. Okay. So I'm not comfortable in Ghana right mm -hmm. now because wellness is whole, mm -hmm. like it's holistic. Mm -hmm. and from like a social wellness, I'm not okay because mm. I want to be around the people that I love and okay. love on them. And okay. for a long time, I've always been like, you gotta suffer mm. until you figure it out. And I don't wanna do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I can be comfortable in Ghana, but I'm still, I wanna go home, mm -hmm. reset. And okay. And then bounce back do, again. Do this thing again. Okay, okay, let's talk about, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about relationship, okay? Someone said in the comments, I disagree. Let me, let me not quote it wrongly. You say, she said, I disagree with you on your ideas on how relationships should be here in Ghana. People don't listen. I'm not saying how relationships should be. I'm just saying how relationships here have affected me. <laughs> <laughs> you can have your own way of doing things. Every country mm -hmm. has different dating norms mm -hmm. and it's okay, cities. Dating in Philadelphia might be different from dating in L.A. It just comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, I don't know how it's supposed to be. Okay. But this doesn't work for me. I see. <laughs> That's it. I see. Do you, do you believe in sharing? Like a friend is in need and then they come to you maybe for money or support. Do you believe in sharing? Absolutely, because I wouldn't be here if I didn't have people that love me. Because okay. it's not easy to move away. Like sometimes... I have to call people to assist me with certain things mm. and at the same time when I'm up and I have it, baby, you know you can call me. <laughs> so I think you should share, but I think, 
Yeah, you definitely. So why don't you want to share your mind? <laughs> <laughs> share my mind about what? I remember you told me you went to a club, right? And you were with somebody, right? And it was a look of guys when I went to the bathroom. <laughs> when I came back, there was a line of women like waiting to talk to him. And I'm just like, I don't know. Like there is a scarcity mindset of men in Ghana mm -hmm. where everybody's like, oh, let me get him, let me get him. Yeah. And everybody wants the Mrs. Degree. And granted, like I would like to get married, like eventually, you know. Mm -hmm. But I also, I'm not gonna like mm -hmm. look like. <laughs> oh, he belongs to me. <laughs> you guys are crazy. I'm not doing that. Uh -uh, no. I see, but let so I think that perspective yeah. and those mannerisms, like mm -hmm. I don't think that every woman is competition mm -hmm. to me, even mm -hmm. if she's very beautiful. I think like if this guy wants to pursue her, he can. But I'm not going to give her this attitude. Okay, like, so I'm just going to step aside. Like, oh, you look too good, you bitch. You <laughs> bitch. Like, you're not going to take my man. Like, I don't want that. Like, everybody has someone that's for them. Okay. You know? And I even tell, like, I'm very vocal when it comes to guys because I don't want my relationship with a woman damaged because mm -hmm. of a guy. Okay. And maybe his indecisiveness mm -hmm. or... I don't want to be like okay like it's just like it, i think it's not that deep you you love teaser you love fufu you love banco this is how most Ghanaians male sees it it's nothing personal they say so it's yeah. not indecisiveness but it's just more of like, like exploring varieties uh, of okay i don't want to get in trouble don't cancel no, no, me no. okay no, I mean, <laughs> it's not that deep. Like think a about it Banku and Tizu is not the same thing <laughs> the same. as me being a man <laughs> wanting to. It is the same. Okay, I'm not saying. Comment not, down below no, what no, you no, think listen, it is. I'm not judging Ghana. You okay. can do what whatever you want to do. do. Okay. But personally, as a woman, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel safe in that sort of relationship. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. Maybe okay. my husband is in South Africa. I, I see. We will send a me. message to your husband very soon, right? Yeah. The last time you were on, we we put your uh, G, uh, Instagram out there, yeah. And you told me that listen, hey, for it, you called me right. And like the guys are blowing up my Instagram in my DMs. Yeah, and to be honest, like <laughs> it's interesting because I have friends who maybe have like so many people in their DM, but for me now it's kind of like I can't really respond <laughs> to everybody, and it's like. Thank you, uh -huh. but like, bro, you're gonna send me a message uh -huh. on both pages and email me? <laughs> no, your future husband is looking for you, okay? You are still single, okay? They are still watching, okay? Send a message to your future husband watching right now. He's out there, trust me, he's watching. The best way to get my attention. Mm is through support of my business okay and anyone i've ever dated that's how it happened wow and that maybe i shouldn't give that cheat okay cheat. now it's a cheat code <laughs> if you are watching this i'm going to put every business you have down below please all you need to do is to support and then you win her heart no it's Fair deal? you don't know no you don't oh. win that easily it does not oh. work that way but what i'm saying is i'm, I'm looking very, out for them no, no, i'm a very passionate person okay. so the things that i do are very important to me okay so Things in the past didn't work with guys who mm -hmm. didn't really like think it was important okay. or like okay. prioritize okay. what was mm -hmm. important to me. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. guys, to be honest, I'm like this. I'm not open. Mm -hmm. I'm not even accepting dates right now. Mm -hmm. I'm focused. Focused. Wow. Let's move on a little. You you lived in South Africa for almost two years and now you are almost a year in Ghana. Okay. Sum everything up. Compare them side by side. South Africa was an easier adjustment because it's more, it's closer to the West. So mm -hmm. it, it was kind of like the first stop mm -hmm. of go, moving to Africa. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, from maybe a political standpoint, I think it's easier to come to Ghana and buy land and build with support, knowing the right people, all of that is important. Mm -hmm. Whereas South Africa is kind of taken by white people. White, so okay. while it's an excellent place to live, it will have 
some challenges. Challenges. But it depends on where you are. I was in okay. Cape Town, and sometimes the racism in Cape Town or the tension between races can be a lot to handle. So wow. even for me, I needed to take a break. But I also felt like my workshops were empowering people to take up space, mm -hmm. to love on themselves, mm -hmm. to feel like more like qualified yeah. or more like dignified than, you know, um, others. So okay. South Africa bothered me, but my work kind of addressed it. Okay. Um, I would say in Ghana. Hmm. <laughs> The thing is, Ghana is not an easy place to be, mm. but it really strengthens you. And when you're doing cool things, people will support you. And I think for me being here for nine months, I have like, yeah, yeah, I'm not dipping in and out of Ghana. I'm here, you know? So I think sometimes people respect that a little okay. more because it's not like you're here for a month and leaving. Okay. Um, I will say that like, you just have to create your oasis in Ghana, mm. like get a place you love, mm -hmm. get make it as beautiful and as comfortable as possible and find the group of people that you like and use Ghana as a time to love on yourself. Okay. And okay. for me, I'm very, very social. So sometimes I'm like, Wah. yeah, you know, um, okay. but Ghana, like now I feel like I've been a little antisocial because I just want to focus on myself and really like building ghana i think is very easy to mm -hmm. get distracted by enjoyment and like, <laughs> enjoyment. Yeah, enjoyment send a message to the diasporans watching someone is watching from the us uk all over the world right yeah. send a message to them they want to move or whatsoever send a message to them okay so what i would say is test the waters come mm -hmm. network kind mm -hmm. of understand the different areas and See where you would like to fit. I came into Ghana blindly, literally mm -hmm. blindly, mm -hmm. and you know I didn't know those things. Um, I would also say be very, very open to unlearning mm -hmm. because there's lots of things that you think should work a certain way, and that's just not the reality because this country is Ghana, you know, in Ghana they do things the way they want to do it, whether you like it or not, and they do it on their timing. Mm -hmm. So kind of adjust your expectations. People aren't going to have the same sense of urgency. It's not a machine. And um, New York, London, all these places are a machine because it's been, you know, created that way. Ghana is mm -hmm. its own chaotic, interesting place. <laughs> yeah. So, so be mm -hmm. open to unlearning and don't be afraid to like network. I think sometimes when you come to a new place, you're like, oh, I found my people. No, no, your people like you can have people <laughs> you like, but my circle is shifting yeah. because I have some people I adore and I want them. So handpick the people you want in your life, but you can still be open to you know going out with people and not necessarily going out to party mm -hmm. go on a hike do productive things together one thing that i've realized is like you are not really my friend if we are not doing productive things together mm -hmm. and if we're only doing things that aren't productive you can be that in that category mm -hmm. but really try to cultivate a circle that can see you in mm -hmm. different elements as okay. well interesting now you've been here almost a year do you think it's possible to make it here in ghana Absolutely. It's, you know, it just takes a lot of patience and mm -hmm. it takes commitment and things don't work on your timing. And Ghana constantly reminds you of mm. that. You, you make a meeting with somebody, they come up two hours later. And you're like, ah. <laughs> so I think that is definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to understand that, like, you just have to work hard and stay focused mm -hmm. and make a decision. I didn't I make a decision. I'm sure that influenced my experience, yeah. but I'm doing the best that I can do. And I think that when you're doing the best mm -hmm. that you can do in a place, it just takes time. Like mm -hmm. sometimes the best I can do is work on myself. Okay. Not to cut it off, but you have a wonderful portfolio, even working in higher positions and stuff like that. Let's talk yeah. about it. Yeah, you know, I've always thought that I was going to climb the corporate ladder and mm -hmm. that was going to be my um, career trajectory. So. Right. I've worked in a variety of different industries in a lot of leadership positions, whether <laughs> it's um, 
in the aerospace industry mm -hmm. or working with, uh, for nonprofits. Okay. And I decided to go out on my own because I just wanted to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's a little challenging because I have like aerospace companies that call me and they're like, okay, are you done living in Africa? Are you ready? And we like, need you back. No, absolutely. So I love that I've had a lot of experiences, um, you know, working, just maybe a snapshot. Um, I've studied psychology and mm -hmm. cross-cultural mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. Then I went to grad school for communication mm -hmm. management and mm -hmm. I did diversity and inclusion workshops mm -hmm. for different companies, whether it was aerospace, energy companies, mm -hmm. um, and nonprofits. Okay. And then when I moved to LA, I worked as um, the director of outreach for a nonprofit, and we used to teach aerospace inspection skills to mm -hmm. veterans and underserved communities. So I've always been focused on impact. I led a scholarship program, and I love that all of my experiences have helped me develop the confidence to come to a place and feel like I have the tools in my toolbox to conquer it. Mm -hmm. And this is really important. You might not have direct experience, but if you have experiences with transferable skills, mm -hmm. that's what's the most important. So do the consultation. I'm really going to help you think through your, you know, personal development and like what sort of transferable skills that you can implement, whether you're moving from Philadelphia to L.A. or L.A. to South Africa or anywhere, because mm -hmm. transferable skills are something you can take everywhere. Mm -hmm. And understanding that when relocating allows you to have flexibility when things don't go exactly the way you want them to go. Okay, interesting. Now, let's talk a little bit about the negative part of America, USA. <laughs> you know, okay. you said so many, oh, I love L.A., L.A. is beautiful, it's whatever. But someone came on the show and they said, listen, this glamorous things you think America looks like is not what it looks like. And my city is the murder capital of the world. And okay. people kill themselves on the streets each and every single day. You're from Philadelphia. It's not that easy. It's okay. very dangerous out there. And people, are, people want to move back, right? Yeah. But when they hear you say, oh, LA is beautiful, they're thinking, okay, maybe I should just stay. But people are saying, listen, it's not beautiful here in the USA. Let's talk about the negative I mean part. Every place has its beautiful parts, but what I will say is growing up in Philadelphia mm. where it's not a safe place, mm. I just never really felt safe and like even being in crowds, like I get a little, I, like actually Chelly Wate this weekend, it's like a street art festival yeah. in Jamestown in mm -hmm. Ghana. It was like one of my first times being in a really huge crowd but not feeling unsafe. Whereas like the same thing sort of festival in the US, you don't know if an argument can happen, someone mm -hmm. can get shot. Mm -hmm. So, and being very close to gun violence myself, like when I was in high school, my mm -hmm. sister, we were walking to um, a Chinese store mm -hmm. and I begged my sister to go with me. As we're walking towards the store, like say mm -hmm. it's right there, mm -hmm. um, there were guys in front of the store. We're walking towards the store, the guys are here someone drives by and starts shooting the people at the store. Wow. So sometimes it made me a little like just paranoid, you mm. know, and what I love about even though South Africa wasn't like the safest, I was I just made sure I was in Ubers. I went home a little early. I wasn't walking by myself. Ghana is definitely safe. And I think that that peace of mind, like when I went to Copenhagen and I fell asleep on a look, hold up fell asleep on a train mm. and the guy he tapped me and said ma'am this is your second time going around he was <laughs> like I want you to he was like I want you to get home safely so I wanted to wake you up and he was like you know I like to think that there are great people in the world so you know mm -hmm. I want to make sure you're okay and that for me maybe anywhere else I'd have been robbed I'd have yeah. lost my phone you know no, anywhere else in the U.S. you can't do that no, in the US, and I will say when I think about the fact that you can go to a grocery store mm -hmm. or like a movie theater mm -hmm. or just down the street and you can get like shot is yeah. really uncomfortable for exactly. me. Exactly. There was a really huge crazy shooting in Philadelphia over the last like three months mm -hmm. and where it took place is somewhere is exactly where I was. The wow. last place I w last time I was in Philly. So sometimes when I go home like 
there's things that I miss, mm -hmm. but there's things that I, there's like anxieties mm -hmm. that I don't miss. Mm -hmm. so Interesting. It's not everywhere, mm -hmm. but I will say that the lacks on gun control, it makes you feel a little uncomfortable, yeah. wow. but crazy things happen everywhere. Do you, do you know <laughs> how to use gun? No, I'm not that person. Like my family, like some people have their gun license and mm -hmm. all that, but like for me, I've always been afraid and maybe it's something I need to do. Like, I would like to go to a gun range, but for a long time I was like, I don't want to see guns. Okay. I don't think people should have them. In Copenhagen, they it doesn't make sense for civilians to have guns. But I think because the police in the U.S. were actually, like, created as a force of oppression, mm -hmm. civilians feel like they need to have it. So I see mm -hmm. it from both perspectives. But, guys, I'm a lover. <laughs> But I'm also wow. a boxer, and my boxing yeah. name is Meg Ali, exactly. but I'm still a lover. <laughs> okay, interesting. Wow. Do you have any regrets? About moving to Africa? Yeah. Hell to the no, 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 no. <laughs> so no. It's, it's been worth it no, for you? No, it's worth it because I've had the most incredible experiences of my life here. I went bungee jumping in South Africa mm -hmm. off the tallest bridge in the world. That was like a major moment in my life. And mm. I did the Wakanda sign because I knew what I wow. was going to do was going to be for the culture. You wow. know? Um, I've had incredible experiences in Kenya. I've had great experiences in Ghana. I love that. I've always loved Caribbean food growing up. So I feel like coming to West Africa is like going to the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that despite all of the challenges I've faced in South Africa or Ghana, I'm very grateful that I get to be here. I mm -hmm. think that so many of our ancestors never thought like it would be a day where people from the diaspora can come back so sometimes when i have and i'm complaining i have to understand that i get to do this and i'm grateful mm -hmm. and it, there's so much of africa to explore and i really want to be a part of the building of africa and i pray that like god strengthens me during the challenging moments because it's inevitable, but I'm dramatic, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah, no, it's thank it's been you. a wonderful conversation. No, you know, I wish that when I created the Crown Workshop, mm -hmm. I created something that I wish I had as a kid, and I think really assisting people in their decision making around relocation is something I wish I had ten years ago. So I really love that. Um, I get to do this. I hope that more people get to experience mm -hmm. the continent. Um, I will never regret moving to Africa. And mm -hmm. I will, sometimes I think, am I ever going to leave? Okay. <laughs> like, to be honest. So wow. I, I love, I mean, I still love the U.S. So I just want to be back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I think that you should explore. Okay. And like be open. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll go to Rwanda and feel like, actually, that's for me. Right. So right. I think don't be so fixated mm -hmm. on what's comfortable for you. Be mm -hmm. open to exploring, meeting, okay. learning, growing, evolving. Um, yeah, so I hope I've motivated you today. They I are motivated. It was a vibe. They are was motivated. A vibe. And I think all of my interactions with people, I would like for it to lead to some growth on mm -hmm. some level. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Thank you once again. Okay. Thank now, you. if you're watching this, she's Megan. And she... She's awesome, trust me. We've known each other for how many months now? Maybe six. Six months. Yeah. She's great. Personality. She's been on the continent for, you know, for almost three years, if I count South Africa. She's, she knows all the ups and the downs, and she's offering this knowledge to you. The mistakes she made, things that you shouldn't do when you come here. Her link will be in the description. Contact her. Speak to her. Do you have any challenges, mind bothering, you know, questions you have? Speak to her and she got you covered. And yes, this is the end of the episode. So I also got nominated for Content Creator of the Year. Oh, yay! <laughs> so if you're watching this, they nominated me. So I'm going to put the name or whatever or the numbers on the screen. Go vote for me, okay? If you are in the US and the diaspora, you can't use the Momo thing here. There is a credit card that you can use to, you know, you have to pay for it. That's unfortunate, but please just support me, it's man. It's not that much. It's not that much. I think yeah. it's it's just zero point zero. I mean, the eight value zero you cents, give to yeah. people through these shows, I think that it's very nominal. Yeah. So yeah. And then yeah. there's a gift, so it would help me, you know, 
keep doing what I'm doing. So go vote for me. Don't be too selfish. And yes, thank you so much for watching. It's been a wonderful episode. Like, share, and subscribe. 80% of you guys watching have not subscribed, which is very, you know, I don't know what to say, but it's sad. You love the episode, but you're not subscribing. Please respect yourself. Subscribe to your YouTube <laughs> channel. And yeah, it's been a wonderful uh, conversation. Thank you so yeah, much for coming. Thank you for having yeah. me. All right, peace out.